Good evening, everyone. This is Dolores Cannon with the Metaphysical Hour. And we're live tonight. This is July the 11th, 2014. And I do want to tell you I'll be in England for the next two weeks, so then it will be uh, shows out of the archives. But we'll be back live again on August the 1st. And I don't know if you heard or not, but tonight is supposed to be a very special event in the skies. It's going to be the, one of those huge moons. They said where the moon is the closest it will come to the Earth, where they call it a super moon. So if, if you've got clear skies, maybe you can go out and look at it. Okay, well, it's just me tonight. Julia's not here, and I have a guest. Annie Stillwater Gray, who is one of our authors, and she's going to be talking about her book. Okay, Annie, where are you? I'm in Solon, Maine. Oh, that's right. I remember we had Annie for the conference, and it was very difficult to get flights out of Maine. And I still had to drive two hours to get to the airport. Huh. Because I've never booked anyone that was so difficult to get it, get to Arkansas, anyway. <laughs> I made it. Yeah, you did. <laughs> I didn't have the best times for you, but that was all I could do. Okay, let me give out the toll-free number before we go any further. Uh, anybody who wants to call in tonight, the toll-free number is one eight 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 six two seven. 6008-888-627-6008. And if you call in, let's keep our questions for Annie and her book and her information rather than uh, trying to ask, ask me questions. Let's focus on our guest tonight. Okay, Annie. Now, Annie has written a book that we have published it's called The Education of a Guardian Angel. And I'm going to let her be telling you about her background. But I do want to say, when she presented the book to me to be looked at, to be published, it was three books. And they were big books. And I just said, no, it's not going to work. So we were able to condense them down into one big book. But I think it works better that way, don't you, Annie? Yes, I agree. It was always meant to be one book. Uh huh. Because there was there just too much uh, detail, and it's better if you can get it into one. But it's the education of a guardian angel. So, Annie, tell us about your background and how you, you know, got into all of this. Well, I've been interested in spiritual things my whole life, and done various things such as pendling, uh, tarot, astrology. In fact, I still have an astrology practice. Uh, and when I was about the, you know, the, those who do astrology understand this, the Uranus opposition, which is around age 42, people call it the midlife crisis. Well, when I was about at that point in my life, my spirit guide, or if you want to call it guardian angel, began speaking to me, and I could hear him very clearly. Mm. Of course, I'd wanted to meet my my spirit guide for a long time, so it was a big breakthrough. Well, how did that happen when he first came through? Well, I was, uh, and, and I'm telling the story because I want everyone to be open to to not only meeting their personal guide, their life guide, their primary guide, you can call them all kinds of names, but I, I want you to develop a relationship with your guide. That's really my focus with putting the book out. Um, okay. I was I was just doing the dishes, you know. I was in an old. Uh, in fact, I'm still still living on the same land, although I have a new house now. But I was in an old pre-Civil War uh, farmhouse that didn't have any running water, and I had just had a, a back injury, and I had just lost my job, and I thought, you know, what's the sense of living? Well, yeah, everything's going down. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so, you know, it was very difficult for me to pump the water in the pump and then, you know, take the big kettle and put it over on the wood stove and stoke the wood stove and get the water hot so I could do the dishes. I mean, it was like it took me <laughs> a 
all morning. And but just about the time I was ready to do the dishes, uh, I hear this voice in my head. I and you know I thought I had gone crazy at the time because of the back pain and stuff. I hear this British voice saying. You never listen to classical music. Why don't we listen to classical music today? And I went, what? <laughs> because I knew it wasn't me. And so uh, I said, uh, okay. And then the voice said, well, I would really like to hear Bach, but you don't have any Bach. All you have is one Beethoven record. So I walked into the next room. You know, I've been in radio for many years, and I had a whole wall of vinyl. This is 1989, so it's before CDs came in in a big way big wall of vinyl records and I didn't even look I just put my hand out and I pulled out the one Beethoven record didn't even look my guy just put my hand right on it so from that point on I knew something was going something special was happening Mm -hmm. so it can happen to anybody anytime but you need to want it and be open to it of course of course that's in in my work they say they're always with you Mm mm-hmm talking to you all the time, they're even yelling and screaming at you. Sometimes. <laughs> yes, sometimes. What I teach in my workshops is how to activate the telepathic center. You know how scientists say we only use a small part of our brains? Well, because of the increase in vibration on the planet and the, the new energy that's here, we're using more of our brains, and you can see that when you look around and see all the inventions and all the, all, all the science and technology But we also can take that kind of a leap spiritually, metaphysically, uh, by using more of our brains that way and becoming more telepathic because the best way to connect with your guardian angel or your spirit guide is to have a telepathic conversation because you can get very precise information that way. Okay. Because that's what I tell people. Everyone has a guardian angel or a guide, whatever you want to call them, when you're born, one is assigned to you, and they have to be with you your whole entire life. Because I have so many clients that feel like they're all alone. There's, you know, they feel like there's nobody, and you're never ever alone. You're always at least have your guardian angel with you. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> but they don't realize it, and they're, you know, they back themselves into a corner of depression, thinking there's no hope out there, but. They say, the guardian angels always say, all you have to do is ask. We can't do anything without your permission. Right. Exactly right. Yes. And in fact, the the life guide or spirit guide or primary guide, whatever you want to call them, guardian angel, that being helps you get ready for this earth life. You actually work with that entity to choose the different challenges that you're going to meet in this lifetime, so that your soul can progress. And that guardian angel is with you when it's time for you to pass over and move on to whatever is next for you. So, you know, they're they're there the whole time. That's what I tell people. You're never alone, and you're never alone when you die either, because they'll be there to help you when you do crash over. Cross over. (laughs) (laughs) Guardian slip. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. But, uh, yes, they're always with you and trying to give you help. But it's interesting what you said about the next challenges. That's what I do with my clients. People, They don't realize everything in their life they have created and put there as a challenge to learn from. Yes, chosen. It's chosen. You, you, you and, your, and your guardian angel work together to choose your lessons and your challenges, yes. Yeah, people are always saying, well, why did God let that happen? God didn't have anything to do with it. You make your own plans. That's right. That's right. But I think they don't want to admit that because then that <laughs> makes them responsible for what happened. Yep. That's, that's a big step is taking responsibility. Mm-hmm. Hmm. But... Uh, you said after he first contacted you, well, then what happened after that? Well, um, he taught me a grounding and clearing meditation because the one thing that people ask me all the time 
is how can I tell when it's my guide talking to me or it's my own, you know, my own thinking, my own mind going around and around. It's, it actually gets quite easy to de- to decipher that. Imagination, but, your own yeah, imagination. Exactly, your imagination or, you know, making up things, yeah. Um, well, so uh, my guide's name is Darcy, Darsaman, and he actually wrote the book. <laughs> I must put that in there, give him credit. Uh, <laughs> He um he taught me a grounding and clearing meditation so that I felt very centered that so and very clear so I could hear him much more clearly. But even even though that happened, there was still an instance, maybe a month into this initial, you know, getting to know each other, although we knew each other of course, but getting to consciously know each other, um, where I he said something to me. You know, I was being a wise acre. I said, now tell me who you are. Who are you really? You know, and he said, I'm your husband. And uh-huh. I, uh, and I just I, immediately this wall of static flew up between us because I didn't believe him. I thought I had misheard him. And of course, he has been my husband many times in many different lifetimes. And I, you know, at the time I was living alone and I thought that, you know, my loneliness, uh, you know, c- caused me to hear that. Yeah. And it took about 10 days to work through that wall of static that went up. And luckily, he has he, his teachers are very helpful. They show up on occasion to help him because he's, you know, he's a first-time guide. He's a first-time guardian angel. So, you know, and his teachers are very good, and they'll help him out. And they helped, they helped him find holes in that wall of static and send love through them so that eventually it melted away and we were able to have conscious communication again. Mm-hmm. Because I know people are always asking me, could my uh, deceased relatives be my guardian angel? Well, the the gar- the, the deceased uh, loved ones can yeah. certainly look in on you, but they have to go through a, a guardian angels, spirit guides have to go through a long training process. I mean, yeah, it was yeah, it was, it was I, like a you know the people who love you who have crossed over will still be there you can contact them yes. but they're not the same as one the real guardian angel exactly because they go through training and that's what the education of a guardian angel is about it it really shows what our spirit helpers go through and it's a lot <laughs> to be able to take on a human being and help a human being yeah yeah that was uh what the book was all about is all the different steps they have to go through before they can graduate, so to speak. And it, it's nothing fast. It takes a long time. I think for Darcy it was 110 years if you count Earth time, which, of course, there isn't Earth time uh-huh. <laughs> anywhere else but Earth. <laughs> but on Earth it was 110 years. But that included going through some other lives, too. Was it that, or was that all in the spirit? No, that was all. He he passed away in 1836 in England, in uh, Cheshire, Cheshire. And, um, and he was immediately notified that he had the opportunity to become a guardian angel, uh, but he'd have to undertake a course of study to do so. So he was shown what guardian angels do, and I remember him remarking, Oh, I, I knew about guardian angels from the Bible, but I didn't really understand that it was a, was spirit guides. It was the same thing as being a spirit guide. And he kind of looked at what what the program was, and he said, "Oh no, I want to do this because they because they said you have this is your choice, Darcy. You can go back to Earth if you want. You can go to the lower wheel again. They called it, you know. Yeah, I call, uh, call it the wheel of karma. The wheel of karma. Yep. Uh, you can go back there, um, but, you know, when you do, when you're on Earth, and things can go, because we have free will, things can go either way. <laughs> yeah. You can make progress, or you can you can fall behind, you can slip and, and accrue more karma, which is what happened to me. So yeah, You can go backwards, that's the you, thing. Yes, you can go backwards, that's right. But, that's one of... That's what Darcy said. He said, "How come, how come I'm here training, and and where's where's my partner? Because she was ahead of me. She was like this astrologer and great healer in Egypt. And what, where is she? Because I would think she would have been ahead of me in this, right? And they said, "Oh, well, we'll tell you what happened. <laughs> it's in the book." Yeah, but he also goes through all the different lives he had to live. I mean, it wasn't anything fast. 
you have to have all the different life education before you get to the point that you can even uh, think about becoming a spirit guide. Right. Yes. Right. There. There are a lot of uh, past life stories to understand how he grew, how how he got to the point where he lived his life with compassion, understanding, and unconditional love, to the point where they said, "Okay, you'd make a good guardian angel. You you can go into training if you want to, but you have to choose." Yeah, because he had to go through karma and repaying it. Because even in the work I do, all of the lives are not uh, happy. There's a lot of them where there's not a negative things happen, and you backslide. And yep. Karma, and you have to repay all that. That's right. You have to bring it into balance by either experiencing something similar or doing something that's going to, you know, bring the whole deal into balance. I know I learned that because some of the stories include me and my past karma. And at first, you know, Dolores, I was kind of hesitant to do this book when Darcy told me about it because I said, well, this is this is serving me up on a platter here. I mean, my karma is going to be there for the world to see. Yeah. And <laughs> and Darcy said, well, he said, um, you know, it will help people. So let's do it because it will help people understand. Yeah, because I have clients that say, you know, when we do the past life, they'll say, well, what if I found find out I did something bad? What if I killed somebody? And I'll try to say, join the club. Yeah. <laughs> we, have to, we have to have the bad lives as well as the good lives in order to learn all these lessons. That's right. The lessons, yep, yep. And so uh, the the first thing that happened, I mean, this is about three months into this conscious communication with Darcy, um, I had a very unusual experience. It was Christmas Day, 1989, and Darcy kept asking me to do this grounding and clearing meditation, and he had me do it every day, twice a day. I was visiting my mother, and I had fixed my room up with uh, you know, fur boughs and Christmas lights. And um, so then all of a sudden this other guide comes in that I was familiar with who who had worked with Darcy before and and she said one of the master guides wants to meet with you so I was kind of excited about that I understood now why he was trying to get my energy up you know because I was going to have to communicate with a very high level being okay and yeah so so we went we went for a walk and as soon as I went out the door and this was December 25th remember and also the other thing that happened that day and people may remember this 89, Christmas 89 was when they had that big uprising in Romania where they killed the king and his family, his his sons, and it was just awful. And I just sat down and cried. My mom had the TV on, you know, so there was the news. And I just couldn't believe it. I could. I said, what is this world? When are we going to have a change in this? We got, this is terrible. And I had myself a good cry, which I think was helpful in kind of clearing out, you know, my energy field. So that when I did step out the door to get some fresh air, there was the voice. You know, there was this master guide speaking to me, and I could tell the difference because there was a a ringing or a timber uh, to his voice. And he said, um, "How would you like to be a leader in the new time?" And and I kind of gulped. Right? <laughs> Who wouldn't? <laughs> yeah, what do you mean? <laughs> you know? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. What exactly does that entail? You know. And because uh, I had been, I was had been very sad that morning. And and he said, "Well, it's going to change. It's going to change, and you can help it change, and you can help other people get it, get on board." Um, and the first thing is to we want you to take down some information that it's now time for humans to have. He says, he said to me before only select people were privy to this information. It was people like uh, you know sages and gurus, you know shaman, those kinds of people who had lives of dedication to spirituality, would would be able to uh, accept this information. But now, evidently, humanity has evolved to a point where everyone can understand this information and not only that, use it in a positive way. Because if you take this information and you, and you use it to do negative things, then everything, you know, unravels. And it's, it's, but they, they're trusting us. The, the Master Guides are trusting us that we're going to do a good job with this information. Yeah, the new book that I'm just finishing of my own, uh, that's what it talks about, how this information used to be just for the privileged few, and now it's being brought back for everybody. Correct, yes. 
head is full of it. So it's it's there available for anybody now. Yes, it's very exciting. It's an exciting time to be alive, right, Dolores? <laughs> I'm always saying. <laughs> well, that's great that your book's about that, too, because the more that this information gets out, um, the, the, you know, the better it, we're all going to do at keeping things, <laughs> getting to that golden age here on the planet. Uh-huh. But um, I was trying to remember some things that were in the book, because I know uh, you go through many, many of the past lives. That's why it was three books in the beginning. There was so much detail about the past lives. But, well, yep. The but, uh, the first one he reads about it at uh, where we're paired as a couple is the one in Egypt that I brought up already. And I was about five years older than him. I was When I was a little kid, I was in Alexandria, and they found me healing a little bird that had broken its foot or something, and they, they said, oh, she needs to go into the healing school. So as a very young child, I went into the healing schools in Egypt. So when I was a, like a teenager, a young woman, um, I was already a teacher, a teacher's assistant, as, the, as it were, and that's when Darcy came into the school. Of course, he was a different being then. He was called Het, H-E-T-T, and he came in and, um, and he, you know, got a crush on the teacher, so to speak. Uh-huh. <laughs> but we did end up together. It was uh, many years later. We found out that we it, uh, healing is a pair, uh, you know, and, and in those days, you know, they had these healing rooms where they used big pieces of cloth to change the colored light that came in through the windows and he would be my ground he would stand at the foot of the patient and hold the feet and channel my energy which I would put through the head and so we were a terrific team in fact we became so well known for how successful we were that the pharaoh insisted that we move and become like part of his extended family so we could be at his beck and call, you know. Okay. So that was that's why he that's why Darcy said, "Wait a minute, she was my teacher. Where is she? How come she's not here?" <laughs> well, we do all go backwards sometimes. Yes. Well, and I, part of our growth, it's it's like I tell people, it's like it doesn't go in succession. It's like a big puzzle, and you might in different lives you may take a piece of over here and a piece over here. And it doesn't necessarily go in sequence, but you have to know them all to put the whole picture together. Yes, like a big jigsaw puzzle. Yeah, so but then you can that... step off. You can step off of that wheel. At some point, you're you're informed that well, you've done pretty well. You can step off of the uh, the wheel of karma. Uh huh. And that's what happened to Darcy. So. Um... But anyway, he had to go through a lot of lives, and he made a lot of mistakes. But I think it's really interesting when they started to train him. Yes. The little baby steps he had to take. Yes, his first lesson was just in breathing. And and I know that sounds odd because he's not in a physical body, but there's a spirit body, and the spirit body expands and contracts. It's it's that was all he did was learn how to breathe because it uh, it was they wanted him to learn how to bring himself to center so that he could focus and he could learn the many lessons he had ahead of him. Mhm. Because you don't just become a guy and suddenly there was a whole lot of things he had to go through. Oh yeah. But yep. They would put him in situations where he had to make a decision on the spur of the moment, and you know it could have gone either way. Exactly. Exact test situations. Yep, he had many of those. Like test <laughs> the decision he would make, whether it go on to the next level or not. You know. Exactly. Yep. Yep. He had to. He had to stay in the uh, an unconditional love class until he mastered that, and that every reaction by him was always unconditional love, no matter how awful it was. And it was pretty awful, some of the tests they put him through. Yes, I remember that. And it was hard with him to figure it out. You know, yes, it I was. Yep. And then he had to go through non-judgment. That was also really hard because as humans, we automatically, we automatically judge, you know. We're discriminating and we 
and we judge. And he had to learn not to do that at all. <laughs> yeah, and that's always hard. It is, but you know, that's my favorite thing about the guardian angels is that they don't judge us. Yeah, that's what I tell people. Oh, they're always thinking, well, they're disappointed in me or they're angry at me. And I said, no, that's not the way it works. That's they right. Just, they take you for what you are, and they're always trying to help you. Yep. But it's nice to have someone who doesn't judge you, who will love you unconditionally. Yes. Again, that's my thrust, is to get people interested in not only meeting their spirit guide, but really making them a part of their life, you know, working with them every day, having them be their best buddy or whatever. (laughs) Mm -hmm. But I know so many people always ask us the same question you were saying a while ago. They think they hear somebody talking to them, but they'll say, how do I know it's not just me and my imagination? Well, you can you can ask for you can ask for information. Like I always tell people, well, if you want to know, let's t- test it out. Right, write down a question or write down something you really want to know, and then just say, okay, guide whoever you are, I want to know this. Help me help me learn this or help me find this out, and then see what happens. You know, a lot of people communicate. You know, intuitively with their guide, they communicate visually. They get uh, or dreams is another way guides like to communicate. You know, so you don't have to have that conscious connection. Although I always promote that because the information can be so exact. I mean, I've written three books with my guide. <laughs> That's how exact. I mean, he tells me word for word what to write. That's how exact the communication can be once you have that telepathic link. But yeah. you can. You don't have to wait for that. You can start today. Mm-hmm. Just uh, saying, yep. is how can you tell the difference? So that's one way you would suggest they do. Sure, um, and I always say, you know, if you want to want to know something, if you just want to make that connection with your guide, write it down and be specific, and then just leave it leave it open there, and then just I bet you, I bet within a day, three days maybe you'll have information on something that you wanted to know about. And when you're getting that voice in your head, I always say, does it feel right? Because, and I'm one of these people, I've got to admit, that I tend to cut myself off, you know, at the neck there, and so my thoughts go round and round and round. And But you need to take deep breaths and really bring in your whole spine and your whole body and really you're, it's it's feeling it in your gut and your heart and hearing it in your mind, and then you know you've got a true link. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, Julia always says one way she can tell, she'll ask a question, and she said, but then the next day you will have your answer three times. Oh, that's uh, neat. It might be a song you hear on the radio, or it might be a, a sign or something, you know, on a building. Or it could be anything, but she said, you watch, or you might meet somebody unexpected and they'll say something. Yes. They'll get three confirmations within the next day. Oh, Trey, cool, Julia. I like that. Uh (laughs) Uh-huh. That's what she's always telling when we're teaching our classes. Uh Uh-huh. I like that very much. Well, you know, songs do. You get songs that mean a lot all of a sudden. Oh, yes. Something in there. Yes, before I was going to speak at the conference, um, uh, we were having breakfast and they they had the, they had music going, and the, and the, they were singing "Long May You Run," and I said, "Okay, I'm with that." <laughs> okay. <laughs> with me, I always get a lot of my answers with numbers. Really. And I've had a lot of people who uh, call in and email us. They think they're going crazy because they keep seeing the same numbers over and over again. Uh Uh-huh. And it's usually 11s, 22s, those kind of numbers. Okay. Because those are the master numbers. Exactly, yeah. Master dreamer, master builder, yep. Yeah, when I see them, I'll see them everywhere. And I know they're telling me they're here, we're we're taking care of everything, don't worry about it. (laughs) I love that. Julia always says when she sees the repeating numbers over and over again, she said that's your guide giving you a hug. Oh, nice. (laughs) I like that, too. (laughs) Yeah. But um, 
I know people think there's something wrong with them because they keep seeing these numbers, and you wouldn't believe the emails and things we get. And I said, no, there's nothing wrong with that. That's just the way the universe works. And to pay attention to those repeating numbers. And it's it's a positive sign, really. Uh -huh, it is. Yeah, yeah. So I, really, I want to bring that out because a lot of people who are listening have asked the same questions. Yes. Oh, I wanted to say a couple of things about the the spirit guides or the guardian angels, and they they have a creed. So, because I don't want people to be uh, afraid to reach out to their spirit helpers, because they always operate for our greatest good, and they yes. are never allowed to scare us. Ever, they are not allowed to do that. If you're scared by something, it's not your guide. <laughs> now they uh, they trick us once in a while to get us on the right path, but they're not allowed to scare us. Well, they can be mischievous too. Yes, they can. Yes. <laughs> and the other thing too is that that um, they will step back and allow privacy if you ask for it. You know, if you have a hot date or something, and you'd like, you know, you don't want your you know guide right at your shoulder. You say, well, give me a little time, you know, give me some privacy. You just ask for it. Like like we were saying, you ask for anything, and, and the guides will help. And that's and of what course, I've heard. They say, don't worry, we don't watch you when you're in the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> yes, right, right. Oh, yes. And they don't judge us, of course. We talked about that. That's one of my favorite things. And they always come to us in unconditional love. In fact, I had an email from uh, somebody who came to the conference and who, who read uh, Education of a Guardian Angel, and she said that I cannot believe how much unconditional love is all around me. She said, I, I, my whole life has changed. Yeah. That was pretty nice. Because so many people, they, they just get themselves down. They're so far down, they said they can't get out of that hole they've dug for themselves. And they don't realize they have done it themselves. Yeah. And yeah. that there is help all around them that can help them get out of it. Exactly. You can tap into pure love when it, you just ask your guide. They're always there for companionship, for information, for security, protection, creativity, humor. Guides have a great sense of humor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like you said, mischievous every once in a while, too. And they offer comfort and healing. If you're down because you're ill or you have an injury, they'll help you with that too. Mm -hmm. They're really they're really wonderful companions, and I encourage everyone to reach out and make your guide a part of your life. Well, I do a workshop uh, at some places, and in one part of it, I have them uh, go to meet their guardian angel and to ask him what his name is. And then they can know what, how to contact him. Excellent work, Dolores. Yes. <laughs> All right. And it's because, uh, you know, they don't really have a name. A lot of them don't. Right. But being humans, we have to know what to call them. Yes. So they've got to give us some something. Yes. And uh, they'll sometimes, especially, um, they'll, they'll project an image that they think will be helpful to make that connection happen. Yeah. You know, something that they know that that human being is comfortable with, like maybe a, a grandmother image, right? Or a medicine man, or, or uh, it could be anything, really. I mean, uh, but, be, some people be animals. Yes. Be their yep. guardian. Which yes, goes indeed. to the Indians, you know, with their totems, where they all found their, their personal animal. Yes. They made and the totems, but that's it's the same thing. It, it sometimes it'll be an animal, whatever it is. That's how they want to present themselves to you. Right, and you're right about the names too, because I remember when I was first asking Darcy about his name. The first couple times I asked him, he said, "Oh, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter." You know. So if anybody's, you know, <laughs> I t sometimes when I do when I'm doing uh, workshops and stuff, and you know, I say, "Well, your guide is." coming through as this name, and, and I said, and if you don't like it, just talk to him and you can change it. 
Yeah, because that's what I mean. They they don't have a name, but we're the ones that like to put labels on things. Right, and have images and things like that, so that they they you feel you can feel closer. Yeah, because really, I found they don't really have a body. They're more or less like a spirit form. Yes, their energy like exactly. To, we don't like to just talk to the air. <laughs> want to have something that we can visualize to appear in front of us that we can talk, communicate with. Yes. Yep. In fact, I've got working with Darcy for all these years now. It's been 25 years. Uh, every once in a while, I'll ask him to come to me in, 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 with a different image, just for variety. <laughs> you know, from another life that we shared. Right. We yeah. had many lives together. So I'll say, well, why don't you come as a American Indian life? You know this time and and we'll hang out that way so it's really fun <laughs> at least that way people would know they're never ever alone that's the main thing i agree and you're not you're never ever alone yet i i take the example of if you're driving across country and you think you're alone you're driving across the nevada desert your guardian angels right in that shotgun seat right next to you you're oh. not alone at all Mm-hmm. Uh, one story I like to tell when I'm doing my uh, workshops dealing with guardian angels, I said I had a friend who was driving on the highway, and he stopped to pick up this man who was by the side of the highway that wanted a ride. Well, when he opened the door to let the man in, the man said, I, I don't think I want to ride with you. Your dog looks mean. Uh-huh. So he closed the door, and then uh, my friend went on. And he's laughing because his dog had been dead for two years. Wow. But see, it appeared that way, your guide or however it wanted to appear, because he wasn't supposed to pick that man up. I see. That's a great story. Good way to scare the man off because something might have happened. Yep. The guide was protecting him. Yeah, and he appeared as his dog. So they can do all kinds of things. Yes, they can. Yep. One of the things they can't really do is physically move things, you know, physically move objects. I mean, there's they certainly can uh they can work with the animals and birds to bring messages. I always watch for bird signs and animal signs now because uh what was it that I had today? Oh yeah, I had a a bag of uh sage, western sage, like I wasn't anywhere near it and all of a sudden it it came up in the air and fell on the ground and I said, "Okay, that means I have to smudge." <laughs> I think it was because I was going to talk to you tonight, Dolores, and they wanted me to smudge the area. Oh, okay. <laughs> but I have, I have heard strange stories of, though, where people were saved by by strange people that just appeared. Yep. And then later, when they, the person was gone before they even had a chance to thank them. Yep. That it's it's interesting how that that can that can happen and. Is we don't really understand. I don't understand that, and maybe you do. But are they walk-ins? Are they, you know, are they angels that can take form? Because that takes a lot of energy for them to do that. Yeah, it does. But then they're just there for that little length of time to help the person. And I've heard many, many really uh, strange, or very good stories of how the person's life was saved. But that's excellent. Yeah, we've always assumed it was their guide, but it had to take a physical form. To do it, yeah. Indeed, at that point. That that takes a great deal of energy for them to do. Of course, my guide is a first-time guide, so maybe he'll he'll develop that kind of uh, uh, ability, you know, as he progresses. But that's <laughs> the other thing I really wanted to get across too is that it's not a one-way street; it's a two-way street. You know, when we start paying attention to our guardian angels and listening to them and letting them help us, we are helping them too. We are helping them, like um, I think right at the beginning of the book there of uh, education of a guardian angel, um, Darcy meets his his spirit guide or his, his guardian angel from the life where he, that he had just passed over from, and the uh, the guide says his name is Alaron. He says, "Well, you know, you've done you did so well that I'm now going to move up and become a master guide." Uh huh. And of course, the conversely, if people really um, you know, like you said, get in that real that pocket of depression, and they and they and they just curse out any kind of help that they might be able to tap into. 
um, then that then the guide loses energy too. So it's really a, it's a two way street, and I don't know the creator set it up that way I guess because it's it, we're all in it together. Mm-hmm. And they um, they have different levels that they move to also. Exactly. Exactly. So help your guide <laughs> by by making them a part of your life. Yeah. It's fascinating a story, and I think that's why more people should know about it, because they wouldn't feel so alone out there. Yes, and it's, and and also the other thing too is that I know that that your your primary guide or your your um, your life guide is like is is with you all the time, but that guardian angel can bring in other guides to help you depending upon what's going on in your life. Now yes. I don't know if you remember at the conference. There was a gentleman who stood up and said, you know, I was a professional golfer, and I know I had a spirit guide who know about golfing because I, some of those shots I made, you, could, you couldn't make unless spirit, somebody from spirit was helping you out. <laughs> and, and so he said, but then when I retired, I, I told him to go away. I didn't need him anymore. So he said, did he leave? Well, it turns out that that particular guide left, but it wasn't his primary guide or his life guide. That was a guide that his his main guardian angel had brought in to help him while he was a professional golfer. Yeah, so, I do that in my classes a lot, too, and the workshops I do on guardian angels, is that you have one main one that is with you your whole life, but if your life is complicated, you may have three or four, but they're like minor ones, you know? Yep, and and the, it has to be okay with the with your life guide. It has to be okay with your main guardian angel. In fact, sometimes they go ahead and bring them in to help you. Um, it's sort of like I I don't know. This is a rather mundane image, but it's like your guardian angel, your the one that's with you your whole life, is like a traffic cop and kind of directing traffic. Okay, this guide come in while you know while the, your kids are babies and you need like a nanny guide. <laughs> yeah, and um, but it has to be okay with the with the life guide. Yeah. Yeah, and there are many times in your life when uh, things change because everybody's life does change. Then some of these other guides will leave and another one with more expertise in the area you're going into will be allowed to come in and they can switch places. Yes, yes, but But your life guide is always there. (laughs) The main one is always with you. He's assigned to you from the cradle to the grave. (laughs) Yes, indeed. They actually, I think they get to choose you because every um, reading I've ever done, there's always been some kind of connection to the to the guardian angel, to that spirit, you know, from a past life. Everybody has known their their life guide before in some way or another. So there's always a connection. That would make sense, though, because who would know you better? Exactly. Than someone who's been in your life before. Exactly. Yep. And loves you. That's the big thing. They love us so much. It's overwhelming sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> but that's another thing I'm always bringing out to people. There is no negativity in any of this. The only time I've found negativity is the person themselves is creating it. They're creating that through fear, because look how powerful your mind is. You can create anything you want, but it's the person that is doing it. It's not outside forces. No, it's certainly not your guardian angel. Yes, you're very you're very correct about that. And there's getting past the fear is the hard thing for some people. Oh, yeah, because I work with that all the time in my work. And they, the ones I work with, are always saying fear is not real. Fear is an illusion Uh for entertainment purposes only. I love that. That's what they say. (laughs) (laughs) It's great. You've got to get over it because your mind is powerful. You can create anything you want in your life, anything. So why waste it creating negative things when you can have the whole world? That is a powerful message. Mm-hmm. That's what how I do my work with that. It's what do you how, what do you want to create with the rest of your life? It's it's really wonderful when you can let go of the negative, Everything. move away from it. Yep. 
everything in your life you have put there. It's your creation. You put it there to learn from. And some of people, they just all they're going on and on and on about how terrible their life is, how bad it is. You just don't know what has been done to me. And I always ask them, did you learn anything from it? Because that was the reason you had the experience. Did you learn anything from it? And some of them will say, well, no, I did it just a horrible experience. Well, then guess what? That means you've got to come back and do it again. Uh-huh, yeah. You didn't pass that grade in school. Yeah, in spirit school, yep, that's right. It just keeps all... coming. Yep, it keeps coming back until you you get it. You okay. until you learn it. Figure it out, and you've got it. Then you can move on to the next lesson, which may or may not be easier, but at least it'll be different. It'll be different. Yep. Yeah. Hmm. I really like the fact that uh, your life guide can help you with all just all kinds of things. All phases of earth life, your relationships, parenting, finances, illness, confusion, creativity. It's, uh, you know, whatever you need, they're there to help you. Mm-hmm. And it's, I just love that. And all you have to do, like you said, is ask. Yeah, that's what they say. If you don't ask for assistance, we don't have anyone to assist because they can't go against free will. That's right. So you have to ask. Yep, you have to be open to it. You have to be open and and uh, and just remember that the guides always operate for our greatest good. They love us. They're never going to harm you. Well, I tell people, too, it's the universe's job to provide whatever you want. That's their job. But you have to know what you want. You've got to know what order to put in. This is what I want you to do. You know, you've got to know that, and some people don't. Yeah, I like that. Put in the order. <laughs> hmm. Get a little order pad out there and write it out, and be detailed, and and also be specific, because yeah, you have, to, yeah, you have to be specific. Yeah. Yeah. I do yeah. creating creation workshops with Dee Wallace. And she's always comparing it to going up to a hamburger stand and asking, and ordering a hamburger. And you said, you just say, I want a hamburger. And they give you one, and you say, but I don't like onions. I don't want pickles on it. And they said, well, you didn't tell us that. Yeah. You were not specific, so you get whatever you're supposed to get. And they say, if you're vague, you're going to get vague. Yeah. That's not what I wanted. Well, you didn't. Uh, you weren't specific. So I tell them to write it down and fill it full of details. Yep. Well, I I use the example of a friend of mine who really wanted to find a partner. Yeah. And so she did exactly that. She wrote down she wanted a, a man who was, uh, you know, who was kind and loving and also was very uh, good with money. Mm-hmm. And, but she forgot to put unmarried. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say that's an example that I had. That they got all of the things in the man they wanted, except he was married. Yep, yep. So you got that. You start with that. <laughs> so she sat down and she wrote it all out again what she wanted, and this time she said single. Yes. And so she got this wonderful man. He was ten years younger than her, but she said, "I can live with that." Sure. <laughs> At a certain point, age really does not matter. No, it doesn't. But is there anything else you want to talk about, uh, Darcy? Because you're still in communication with him, aren't you? Oh, sure. He's just—he's right here. He's right here. Okay, Darcy, what do you say? Well, he really wants to talk a little bit about how the uh, the energy on the planet is changing. And okay. it's it's a positive thing. It's a it's it's an opportunity for all of us to raise our own personal vibrations, so that we are operating from uh, our hearts. Let's say let's say our heart and above, and so that we can interact with each other with love and compassion and kindness and understanding, and that this is the way it's going. 
This is the way it's going, and that the, there's a new golden age for the planet that's right here for us yeah. to have. Mm-hmm. That's what he wants to say. I like yeah, that, I Darcy. Le- I lecture on this all the time, and yes. these people always say, well, when is it coming? <laughs> Not down the road somewhere. We're in it now. Yes. And it's it's just a matter of you have responsibility for yourself and for raising your own personal vibrations so that you can you can function in that beautiful place of love and compassion. You can do it. Everybody can do it. And and the energy on the planet is helping us too. You know, I, the um, the book that that Darcy, the very first book that Darcy and I did, the Dawn book, it talks about a new ray of energy and kind of bathing the planet in a new ray of energy that helps us all raise our vibrations. And it's so funny, you never know, you know, when you're going to get a little piece of information. I was at a, a party, one of those summer bonfire parties, and this gal came up to me and said, oh, I just I just saw on a science show that the Earth is in, is in a, a, a big, uh, being surrounded by these photons. <laughs> I thought, oh, yeah, the new ray of energy. There it is. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I got an email yesterday that some science uh, book has come out with. They've discovered a, oh, where there's something out in space that is shooting uh, waves of energy toward the Earth. Yep, they're trying it's to help us. Being proved by scientific methods anyway, but we knew it anyway. We did know it, but it's it's great to have the scientific community on board. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Some people just have to have that piece. Yeah, they have to have proof. Yep. I always say, no amount of proof will be good enough for a skeptic, and that a believer doesn't need any proof. Uh Uh-huh. So which way do you want to swing anyway? (laughs) Yeah. But but you know what? I love talking to skeptics because it's, uh, I don't know, I just, I find it exhilarating and kind of humorous, too. Um. But it's okay. Everybody will find their way to it. If the, everyone can find their way to it, if they want, if they wish to. Yeah, uh, it's and there for they, everybody. If they don't, that's okay too. Yep. Because we're not supposed to change anyone. We're not supposed to convert anybody. They'll all find their own way. Yep. And they said eventually everybody will get there, some sooner than others. Yes. But it's not up to us to change people. Because nope. I get a lot of male people are saying, well, what can I do to change my husband <laughs> or my children or something? And that, that's not your job. What you do is you take care of yourself and live by example. That's what I was going to say. You live by example. And then and eventually, that's what I tell people, people eventually, they'll, people begin asking questions. Before then, it just goes right over their head. They're not even going to listen to you. Right. But then eventually they're going to start asking questions. And when that happens, then we have the answers. Yep. And we're there for them. But up until that time, no amount of talking to them or trying to convince them is going to do anything. No, but they have to come to it in their own time, each person. Yeah. But then again, I'll, I'll I'll point out that everybody's responsible for them for themselves for taking responsibility for what they're doing and what they're thinking, and also for you know adjusting to the changes that are going on. Mm-hmm. And even when I was in China a few months ago, they're saying we know something has happened. We can feel it. We can see it all around us. He said, "How can anybody say it's not happening?" I agree. How so, can you say it's not happening? But other ones say, oh, no, you know, it's, just, it's not. You know, it's a horrible, awful world and all of that. But, you know, that's the world they want to live in. That is their choice. Yes. It's a little sad, but yes. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Okay, well, you would, would you believe an hour has gone by already? I can't believe it. It's crazy. <laughs> this has been fun. Okay, but um, the book is called the, the Education of a Guardian Angel, and it should be at the stores. And I know it's on Amazon, and we have it on our website too. If anybody wants to find out more about it, 
But, Addie, tell people how can they get a hold of you if they want to reach you. Well, I have a very easy email. It's Annie, A-N-N-I-E, at welcomeradio.com. Uh, I've been in radio for 40 years, so I thought Welcome Radio would be a good way for you to remember me and a good way for you to find me, welcomeradio.com. Well, tell us, tell me about your radio show. What is it on the Internet or what? Um, well, it's it's uh, I do I do several shows. <laughs> I do I'm really up to my neck in radio. Um, I I did a live show today because I really like to listen to new music, and I uh, for all the years I was in rock and roll radio, I got, had to play mostly males. You know, you have they hand you your playlist, so I do all female artists, new stuff, and I feel as if it's I'm putting my finger on the pulse of how women are thinking and what they're feeling. So I do that on Friday afternoons, and that's at uh, www.wmhb.org. That's the Colby College radio station here in Maine. And then I have a syndicated show called the General Store Variety Show, which is really fun. It's in its 15th year, and it runs on five stations here in Maine. Oh, one's, actually, one's in New York State. But th- you can listen when they broadcast it because most of them uh, simulcast online. And if you go to welcomeradio.com, the list is there. But it's a variety show. We play all kinds of music. We pick a theme, and we do songs around the theme. But I also pretend I'm running an old general store, and all these different, like, lo- locals come in, you know, the regulars come in to get their, their coffee and their tea and whatever. But also, there's like an opening in the vortex where I, I have interviewed... Um, gods and goddesses, old man winter, the sandman, um, you know, and so we have all these archetypes that come in, which I think are fun because they always comment on our uh, society today, you know, kind of yeah. mixing the uh, ancient ways with new, and it's it's pretty funny. It's it's fun. It's really fun. Well, this show, this is BBS Radio, and it goes all over the world. Yay, world. And I was surprised when I could be in Europe or Australia, and they say, we listen to you. Oh, that's wonderful. So I was surprised that it went so far. Well, that's and terrific. Hello to everybody listening. Because <laughs> in the beginning, and I've been doing this show nine years, and when in the beginning I said, well, I feel like I'm all alone here. I'm sitting here talking to the wall. I don't know if anybody's out there. Then I began to get emails from Brazil, from all in different countries of the world, say, oh, no one ever think you're talking to the wall. We're all listening. So That's that wonderful. Made me better, even though I can't see anybody but a wall here. <laughs> <laughs> but so many can hear you, and that's important. Yeah, and uh, we do get message out. That's important. Yes. So if if they want to contact you, or ask about the book, or ask about you and your workshops. It's Annie. What was it again? Give up Annie. Your... Annie at welcomeradio.com. That's oh. the easiest way to, rem- to to remember. I mean, I also have a website that's spiritguides.cc, and I tell people CC the Spirit Guides. Right? That's a, a way to remember that. That's my author page. So there's two places you can find me on the internet. Okay. So if anybody wants to contact Danny, that's how to do it. And you can check on our website, it's Ozark Mountain Publishing, and it's abbreviated O-Z-A-R-K-M-T dot com. And we have all the books listed there. And I do want to remind people, we are going on the Mediterranean cruise in October, and we're putting a lot of advertising on that right now if anybody wants to come on that with us. And we're supposed to be going now. So thanks for listening tonight. If you enjoyed the show, check out more of our other videos and be sure to subscribe and click the like button. Thank you for listening to the Metaphysical Hour with Dolores Cannon.